if you think you're seeing double or you think you're having a deja vu moment, um, you're not. I've already reviewed the Hyperdrum, but once I then published that, I started getting a number of questions on the video and I realized a certain areas where I'd kind of made mistakes or made assumptions and apologies for that because I hadn't really done my research and generally I do do a lot of research. This is not the kind of product where I can just script it out. I need to show you exactly how it works real time. So first and foremost, if you've already seen this video before, it's a different video. If you haven't, sorry for wasting the last 30 seconds of your time, but let's get on to this review. I like the intro to the last one, so I'm going to start off there. Virtual drum kit, I hear you ask. Snare drum. Tom. Second tom. Floor tom. Ride cymbal. Crash cymbal. Hi-hat. Snare. Well, that's all the ingredients. Let's see how good it is. Let's have a quick look at the packaging. It's a very, very well packaged product let's put it that way on the back we've got a quick setup guide and all that kind of details that i never really understand inside first and foremost right there there are a couple of qr codes to help you get set up and tips as to how to use this setup uh, there's got the main user manual in a variety of languages help with calibration and reset and all that the leads we've got headphones to be able to use that control we've got twin small jack to be able to plug it into a speaker which i will be doing good quality cable love good quality cable love this uh, four usb c to usb a to charge we've got the two triggers uh, left and right hi-hat and bass drum there's the main control it's got a, a volume and a power switch on it and the two sticks in short, the control module works in kind of three ways. First, you can plug uh, headphones into it to literally just hear the inbuilt VST sounds, the drum sounds that are built into the control module and hear in real time, although everything's in real time, but without any other connectivity. Secondly, the uh, provided small jack to small jack, which is a really good quality cable. I've used so many of these in my different careers and this is a lovely one uh, this will plug straight into the control module and that can go into a separate speaker you can also connect this to a bluetooth speaker and that bluetooth connectivity is something that we're going to be using because i'm going to connect this via bluetooth to my iphone to work in garage band but before we get there let's sort out everything else so first off, we've got the hi-hat and we've got the bass drum. It says L and R on this. And we power them both on just with the buttons there. And they're both turned on. So I'm going to clip them quite simply into my trainers. Uh, we do also have uh, the Velcro fasteners. If, you don't, if you're not necessarily wearing anything that can be clipped into, you can wrap those around your foot and clip them onto there. But I'm wearing trainers today, so we're okay. And finally, we have the drumsticks. Uh, and these just have a simple button on them where you just press and hold them to turn them on. And you'll press them again when they're touching to calibrate. But let's turn on the control module first. This can be on your person or can be on the floor, can be anywhere. So I'm just gonna place that down here. I've done this before to set it up, but it literally takes two seconds anyway. I'm gonna get into garage band and I'm going to go, not drummer, because that's a sampler drummer kind of thing. I'm gonna get into drums. Tap into drums, and in the gear at the top right hand side, I'm going to scroll down to advanced, and then scroll down further, Bluetooth MIDI devices, Theo.MIDI, MIDI, it says it's not connected right now, just tap it to connect, and we're connected. And let me just turn up the audio for that. Let me just place that down there and let's um, calibrate everything. So to calibrate, we have the sticks just like this at a 45 degree angle and our feet are flat and we just press the button once. You may not have seen that. Let's do it up here just so you can see it uh, and going to hold it down. You see how they go red and then they go back to blue or cyan. That's when they're calibrated. And this is the most important thing with these drums. If you move a little bit, if you put them down, excuse me, uh, or anything, just before you do anything, just recalibrate. So we hold them there and just boom.
And what we've calibrated is that place there is your snare drum, okay? I love these because there's a bit of a haptic feedback in them. And you've got a, a, a small little vibration. It's brilliant. Okay, let's walk before we can run. I've made notes on these so I don't miss it this time because uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, so I don't want to miss it. I don't want to make a big deal about the calibration as much as it takes so much time. It doesn't. I just, I'm telling you, calibrate, done. Um, but it's really important to do. It takes seconds, but what you're doing every single time you move around, you're just telling the software, that's where my snare drum is. So you're there, okay? It's good, isn't it? Okay, let me go back here. So I'm straight onto you and I'm just gonna calibrate again. Okay, so that's the snare. Now it's all about the angles with this. Let me just check my notes. So what we're looking for is the angle of the stick. So that's the snare. We know where the snare is, okay? Snare, there. Hi-hat is gonna be there. Now we're looking at the position of where the stick is, granted, but it's also a lot about the angle. You don't necessarily have to reach up to hit the, the crash symbol, okay? It can easily just be there. It's a lot about the angle. That's the hi-hat. Crash symbol, hi hat, crash symbol. Okay, sorry if it's very noisy. Uh, so that's the most important thing to remember. It is the position through space, but it's also the angle of your stick. So there's your hi hat. If I lift my foot, it's open and closed. It's impressive, isn't it? Uh, I pick up very, very little uh, latency here. Let's have a little play through it. Hi-hat, open, close, crash symbol, right there. It's the angle that that is. If I was a little bit further down, that'd be my tom-tom. Crash symbol, tom-tom, okay? So we go tom, tom, floor tom, ride symbol. See the difference in the angle? A lot of it is with regards to your angles. Now, obviously this is easy with a real drum kit because you can see it, but what we're trying to remember in here is the angle and the position where we're going to trigger those different things, whether it be a floor tom or a ride cymbal, okay? Love it. So that's the basics of Hyperdrum. <laughs> now it's natural to really swing your stick. So for a, for a crash cymbal, it's natural, but you can just as easily get it if you're just. Not only that, but we have velocity. I, I, I love these things. So that's something that I was running into the last review. I was expecting that to be my ride symbol. And it would be if I had the angle, okay? So it's not just about the position. It's about the angle. And I think that's the easiest way to be able to explain that and to actually illustrate that. Let me just calibrate again. Um, Hi-hat, snare drum, because that's where I've calibrated it to. If I went halfway between, I'd still be on my hi-hat because I've got to think about where I've calibrated. Right there, there's my hi-hat. I don't really need to move that much for a crash cymbal. I don't have to reach up here, it's just there. But if I come across a little bit, same angle, I have a tom. So it's angles and position. Uh, a number of people uh, in the comments of the previous video were kind of, uh, they were, not necessarily trip, well yeah, they were tripping themselves up, they weren't quite getting it, but it truly is all about the angle. I'm not changing anything. Looking at my notes, I want to make sure that I'm hitting the crash symbol. So we're bringing both sticks over here because I want to try and hit it with both sticks. Definitely there, definitely there. Crash. It's just there because I know where it is. 
yeah, okay, I'm swinging quite li widely with it, but that's what I'm used to. But you don't have to. It's just that. Similar with the high tom. So first tom, second tom, floor tom. It's all about the angles and the placement. I've got to say, they're so responsive. Now on the website, it does say that it's not um, a replacement for drums. And granted, it's not a replacement for drums. It, there's nothing physically in front of you. So you've got to kind of work as if there were drums there, but you've got to put certain things in place. So if you want to hit something, rather than just hitting like like nothing, thin air, use your technique, use your palming technique to see the... So if you ever get something that's not quite hitting right, just come back and recalibrate. And I promise you, it just fix it. Recalibrating is so important with this. You need to just get used to it. Um, it's not the fact that it goes off, but you may move or you may start leaning forward or you may start leaning back. And it's making sure that you allow the software and the hardware to know where that snare is. Because if it doesn't, it's not gonna be able to read it for you. Also bear in mind, when you do calibrate, you make sure that your feet are flat as well. If they're not quite flat or you've got one foot over here, it's not gonna be able to calibrate as, uh, as effectively as, as it can do. So yeah, calibrate, boom. And the beauty of using GarageBand is that I can change it up and use different, uh, different drum kits. So if I go into, uh, I think it's that one. No, it's not. If I go into here and select my acoustic drums, hit SoCal, which is what I've got up, I can change it to so many different uh, things. Let's go to Roots. Recalibrate. Oh, I just love this setup. Love it. Doing that again, aren't I? There's my floor, Tom. There's my ride. I really hope I've made it clear in this video, just with regards to what we need to do for that whole calibration. So you calibrate here like this, and you remember your angles. So where you've calibrated, that's where your snare drum is. All about angles and positioning. And if you are having problems, First and foremost, make sure you're calibrating. Make sure that you are sat somewhere. Swivelly chair's not exactly the greatest thing because you can have that freedom of movement even if it's just a little bit. But yeah, make sure you're calibrating, make sure your feet are flat on the floor and make sure you spend the time to try and work out those angles and commit those to memory. They won't come straight away. They may not come within a day or two days, but the muscle memory will come. Personally, I haven't had really enough time even now to fully master these purely because work gets in the way and real life gets in the way. But then again, you know, that's just what happens. But the times where I do have a bit of free time, the beauty of just being able to just power these on and it links like that to my phone. I'm just... I just, I just love it. I've played along with songs. It's been great. I can't really hear because of copyright and all that kind of stuff. But yeah... I love these, I really do. Uh, link in the description straight through to Hyperdrum. Uh, they did send me these, um, but they haven't told me what to say. I've been back and forth with them a couple of times. Uh, not since the first uh, video actually, but I have been back and forth to them uh, during that time. And then I spent a bit more time playing with them myself. And these, I personally think that I'm telling you more accurate things now than what I was the first video. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please click like. It really helps out the channel. And subscribe if you fancy joining in, in the community. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to play you out. You still there? You can go if you want.